What's up everybody? If this is your first time here, welcome. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. So today we are sketching a motorcycle. I had a question come through from somebody about, they were asking, how do you draw a motorcycle with the wheel turn? So I've taken my best stab at explaining the thinking behind ellipses and how to draw wheels in perspective and that type of thing. Uh, I've also shared out some references so you can dive deeper. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so before we talk about turning the wheel on a motorcycle, let's just talk about the mechanics of ellipses or of circles, basically. So here we have a, let's talk about perspective a little bit. So here's our horizon line, right? You got the sunset in the background, your beach here, whatever. Now, if we draw a circle right at this horizon line, which is right at eye level, it will be straight like that, right? That's a circle, right? So here's your major axis and your minor axis. And what that is, so now let's say, uh, here's our van uh, vanishing point, okay? Let's say that we have a wheel down here, right? Here's the major axis. The minor axis is always 90 degrees to the major axis, right? So let's just mark that 90 degrees. And what this is, the end of the minor axis or these two points here, right? It's the widest point of your ellipse. So here it will look something like this, okay? Now, as you start to turn, let's say, you know, you have a wheel over here, it's 90 degrees, minor axis. As you start to turn the wheel away, it begins to close. Now here is an example of this. So here in side view, here's a model that I'm just kind of building. It's in a rough stage. Side view, right? And you see the horizon line right in the background. That's the end of this grid plane, okay? Let's make this full screen. Now you've got these ellipses that are pretty full, right? Now as you start to turn, notice what's happening to the ellipses, that the wheels themselves are closing along this dimension here. All right, so side view. Now right about here, it's super noticeable. See how more, much more narrow the ellipse is or the wheel looks? Right, so it's, when you get to a front view, where you can hardly see any of the rim at all because it starts to close. And as you open it back up, the ellipse starts to open. Now, what we're seeing here in this view is equivalent to looking down at this bike here. All right, so here's your horizon line. Major axis is going this way, and then your minor axis, you can't see it here, but it's running 90 degrees to this major axis. So that's uh, obviously a really quick cursory view at the, the mechanics of any lips. Uh, if you want to, there's a great resource by Scott Robertson called How to Draw, where he really breaks down the science in a really cohesive and comprehensive way. Uh, that would be a great start uh, in understanding how to capture ellipses properly in perspective. Okay, so let's get into drawing a motorcycle and uh, talk to how I generally lay it out. So usually, now you kind of create a box. This is your center line for the motorcycle. Okay, and then I'll draw my ellipses or draw my axis, axes. And this is the perspective underlay, basically. So both of these axes are going off into space to a uh, vanishing point somewhere on, on the horizon line that could be off the page. Uh, and then I'll lay out my wheels. Right? So I'll find my minor axis. I'll put my lips down. 
Okay, that's a little bit of a mess, but you get the idea. And when drawing a bike, there's usually about one and a half wheels in between the front wheel and the rear wheel. So I will just find the minor axis there and place the rear wheel here. And this is obviously just the center line for the wheel. And then I'll lay in your my rim. And there's multiple layers to the rim. You have the lip, you've got the inside of the rim, you've got the actual hub of the rim. So that's a whole nother thing to look at. But if you just reference reference images of wheels, you'll get a sense for how many levels of ellipses you'll need uh, in this wheel. Now, as you can see, this particular bike would be laid out with the wheel not turned and as if it's in movement because it's standing straight up. Now, today we're going to use a reference image to help guide us in drawing a bike with the wheel turned so that we know that we're capturing things uh, in the right perspective. Uh, that image is here. Now there's a couple things that we'll notice here that are a bit different from just a, a standard sketch where the bike isn't just stood straight up. So here we'll notice that the bike is actually it's leaned over a little bit. So instead of here's actually here's a great reference point for so here is where our perspective is going. This is a nice perspective line, right? Instead of the wheels going straight back along that perspective line, the bike is tilted. So the wheel is actually, the center line for the wheel is facing upwards. As the bike turns, the angle of the ellipse changes. So you've got multiple, you've got like compound ellipse change is happening here. So not only is the bike tilted over, but then the front wheel is also turned, right? So if we look at this, the wheel is turned, so it's, and it's tilted, so it's going upwards and at a different angle from the rear. So let's find that minor, major and minor axis. It's about there, All right? And here's your wheel. And then here's your other wheel. So let's take a stab at sketching this bike and I'll show you how I would lay this out if I were sketching this particular bike. Now these are key hard points where you can see that the uh, perspective lines are going up into space because the bike is tilted over. That's important and that will, capturing that will help us to really ground this sketch in some realism or give it some additional realism. Okay, so first I'm going to start off with a ground line. All right, so the parking space actually gives us a really good reference point for where the, the perspective line is. So we'll start there. And we know our wheels are built off of this. So let's start with, I'll lay my axis down for the front wheel, which is kind of like this. Okay, and then I have my lips. This is for the center line. This might be a little bit too open. Then we have our second ellipse for where the rim begins. Then we have our brake disc, our disc brake. Then we have, boom, let's just drop in these, the forks. Okay. Forks, triple clamps. This gives us an idea. And then we have our bar ends somewhere out here, all in this upward facing angle because the bike is tilted over. So this is one section. Let's look at how we're gonna lay out the tail. All right, so here, the bottom of our wheel is about over here. So here's the bottom of our other wheel. Let's look, so we're gonna have one wheel, one and a 
half. So our rear wheel is about here. But looking at our perspective line, this is also kind of going upwards into space. So let's capture this, but it's not going to, but it's not turned towards us. So the ellipse is going to be a little bit more open or wider. Okay. Make sure we have the height right, just about. So I'm just showing a bunch of my construction lines as I'm going along here. So now we have, you know, the, the basic, uh, let's actually get our, let's get our motor, the center line for our motor blocked in as well, because that's an important element. These are also going to be at an angle. Right, so let's get this motor in here. And obviously we're looking at this reference image over here okay the light is kind of facing down so here's another ellipse exercise starting to add some thickness to these wheels, or not to these wheels, to these forks. Okay. Boom. You got your fork over here. triple clamp. Okay, so we have our front wheel. Then we have, let's get this kickstand going. Just gonna simplify the kickstand and make it look a little bit different like this. Okay. Now there's a couple other key points that will help us sell the perspective and those are the uh, grips and rear sets or you know foot pegs if you will okay these are nice and round and pretty simple there and it's hard to see exactly how these are attached so I'm just going to make something up uh, let's get this motor blocked in A V-twin, this is an important element. It's called a V in twin for a reason. So here is where our crankshaft is, right here at the base of the V. And if we're looking at this here, the head is somewhere around here. Actually, this might be a little further back. My positioning on this, this might be a little bit short. but let's just rock out. Let's just say that the center point is here and the 90 degrees to that is where the other head's going to be. It's a V-twin, so you don't want to have them going off at a 20 degree angle or some other odd angle. It's important to get the V correct. Right, so I've just laid down the skeleton for the V and then the heads are going to be kind of tucked away. You can't really see them, uh, but at least we know where they are. We have the tank. Let's lay this tank in here. Now looking at the, you know, the ends, the tank kind of comes to a 
and end back here. So let's do one of these. I think my engine was getting too big before. It comes up like this. Okay, then you have this seat, and there's a nice design line right through the center. And then there's another design line up here that I can't really see how it terminates, but and the seat sits pretty low right over the rear tire. It's pretty straight, pretty flat. Kind of comes up towards the rear just a little bit. It's nice and thick. So it looks like a pretty comfortable seat actually. Might not be, but We've got these straps across. Straps might not be comfortable. Got this little bar coming around back here. Comes over the rear top of the rear tire. And then this looks like it cuts in. This must be like a custom fabricated part. Okay. Then you have your suspension mount point here. Again, this is in perspective, right? So this is gonna gonna want to have this ellipse in the right perspective. You draw your major axis that's going out into space that's aligned with this rear tire. There's the top of your uh, shock. Draw the center line. And this kind of connects to a point on top of the swing arm. It's a little hard to discern exactly what's happening with the swing arm in this photo, but I'm going to use a little guesstimation here and say that it comes straight and then kicks in like so and I can see I don't I can't really tell what's going on with this frame here so I'm just gonna make it up and there's got to be some type of structural support here uh, okay so I'm going to assume that there's some more mount point for that swing arm and it looks like there's another peg for a passenger, so we'll just kind of block that in. This isn't exactly a clear photo, but clear enough. And we can see that there's a, a disc brake mounted on this side of the wheel. So we'll block that in. Okay, and then I'm just going to, so, right, so for this, here's the major axis for our shock, the minor axis for that ellipse on the top of the shock, 90 degrees to that. And you just drop that in. There's your shock head. And then you've got your individual shocks going all the way down. I'm just kind of gesturally placing those in there. And then you've got this cover for some of the, I'm assuming, electrical elements and batteries and such that might be under the seat. Okay. Got your wheel. Boom, tuck back. And there's all kinds of stuff going on here that might be a little hard to capture unless we're using a mechanical pen or drawing a little bit bigger but as you can see it's starting to look like it's tilted over with the front wheel turned okay, and then the next part we're going to and this is all based on how we lay out our ellipses and making sure that we're using perspective uh, and starting doing our part to understand perspective so that 
we can not only recreate what we see, but we can then create things from our own mind. That, that's, that's where it all comes together is once we have an understanding enough to recreate certain things without needing reference images. Okay, and here we are. But even, you know, professionals, professional designers and such, for a complicated perspective or arrangement, we'll use a reference image just to make sure that we're putting things in the right spot. You know, no shame in the in the reference game. So then these bars, I'm going to use this perspective line that I laid out earlier to yeah, inform where I turn these bars back up. There we go. And so that they both align. Now on this other side, we've got the brake reservoir sitting on top. Okay, just kind of gesturing that in. And then you can see the end of the grip. And this has a lot of foreshortening in it. So you're not capturing, you're not seeing everything on this other side. funky mirrors, some thickness, okay. Then on this side, we've got our grip. For our, got the mechanism for our clutch lever. Got the end of the grip here around here. Okay, you've got your uh, control stack, I'll call it. I'm sure there's a technical term for it, but I don't know what it is. And again, this kicks back, then comes out. Okay, and then the mirror looks like it's mounted on uh, the same element that contains the clutch lever mechanism. So. Is all turning in space. Here we are. And that looks about right. Okay. Now there are some certain things. So I do think that this bike is a little bit short. Uh, I would probably make it longer if I were to overlay this. And then we'd want and probably want to create, give it a little bit more height as well to really capture, get that motor in there properly. Um, yeah, cause we've got these heads in here. Got this intake. Got your frame so this motor kicks in you've got all this motor here then you'd have your frame yeah so i think i need some more space up front for the frame and such but not bad for a first stab We'll just block that in there like so. A lot of these elements are dark. It's hard for me to see what's going on back there. Let me wipe our fender. I don't want to forget that. Fender comes up and over. That's back down. You can just see the back end of the fender over here. And then it attaches to a mount point that comes off the end, end of the fork. Okay. 
and some light shadow for the wheel just to get it to sit in there. And then a light shadow. And this one has a lot of diffuse lights, not direct light, so we can just kind of, we don't need to get too specific with the shadow. We can just lay it in there lightly. Okay. Add some more contrast to this headlight. Now I'm just taking some artistic liberties with that, but that's what we can do. Show the edge of this seat with a little bit of value. Same thing with the tank, just a little bit of value to show that the tank is turning and that this is the side of it. Now if we were drawing a little bit bigger, or quite a bit bigger, and with a maybe more of a technical tool, like a pen of some sort, uh, we can get more of this engine detail in here. And if I'd given it enough space, this wants to be maybe another quarter wheel longer and a little bit, maybe a little bit taller. Um, but I think that that gives us a, hopefully gives you some idea of the process that I go through when creating a, a bike that might be turned or at a, a non-traditional angle, I'll call it. Okay, so as a quick recap, the, the most important thing is understanding a bit more about how ellipses act in space. And again, a great reference for that is uh, Scott Robertson's How to Draw book. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, check that out. And uh, l you want to get an understanding for what angle it is you're trying to capture. In the, in the motorcycle, right? So you might want to have, you might want to show this bike from the other side where the wheel would, you'd see more of the wheel versus having the wheel turn towards you. So, so first determine what angle you want to sketch. And then uh, if you don't have that base knowledge of, you know, ellipse, the technical ellipse stuff, use a reference image, right? And then just measure your sketch against the reference image or, or use the reference image to help guide your ellipses and your ellipse structure. Um, and that's usually, a, or could be a really simple way to get to a product that you like more quickly. So I hope that this particular video was somewhat useful or at least you found some good resources that you can follow up on. Um, if you did, drop a like, subscribe and if you have any questions, definitely leave a comment. I'm happy to take a stab at any of them that I can. And listen, we'll see you next time. Hope you're well, hope you're healthy. Take care.